As Yennefer of Vengerberg told it, there had been a magic explosion in Skellige. Related to Ciri's reappearance, it had destroyed a vast swath of forest. Geralt set out for the Isles to join the sorcerers and seek further clues of Ciri's whereabouts. The druid Ermion, however, had no intention of letting Yennefer examine the woods, so Geralt and Yen sought out Jarl Krak and Krakt, who helped break down the druid's resolve. Last night, too. Keep loitering, bothering folk. Last night, August birthday, the most. I don't know what to give it. Maybe a nice little address. It's uh, adornment. They engraved it. Melt it. Greetings, White Wolf. I suspected you'd come by. Bah! <laughs> I was sure of it. Oh, uh, yeah? The best stock armory in all Skellig is right here at Kerr Trulda Castle. Everyone knows it. I'll gladly see for myself. Take your time. Give them all a careful look. Looking for someone who can make me a master quality breastplate. Never known a master who wasn't a dwarf. Fergus, perhaps? Say he's holed up somewhere in Velen. What do you think? Who will be the next king of the Isles? Yalmar, clear as day. Lads brave and generous. And from Croc's own line. No better claimant. Craft something for me, will you? So long.
So you're back. Was right. Craft something for me, will you? Wouldn't mind a look at your stock. So long. Foreigner, what? Interested in the weapon? There's a tale behind every item I've got. Tell me a story about one of your weapons. See this sword? You know by its crafter's mark that it was forged in the Isles. It belonged to Lars. It would have been the same age as I. What happened to him? His wife went missing during a nasty storm. It was said the goddess smiled fondly on her. So Lars refused to believe she was truly dead. He ran out on the rocks and begged Freya to give his wife back. Left his sword behind to show the gods humility. And never returned for it. Selling that same sword now? We could have tossed it in the sea. But Fish got no use for blades. He had no family. So I'm selling it. To the right man. Got a diagram. Like you to craft something for me.
What are you peddling? So long. Last night was... Damn well! Yes? 
can hear you two clear on the other side of the island. Good! May all Skellige know, Jennifer of Vankerberg is a common thief! Control yourself, Druid. I haven't stolen anything. I've merely borrowed something and fully intend to return it. Ha! A generosity. Just one small problem. Once used, the mask is rendered completely worthless. Not to mention the risk you'll bury us alive and all the Isles with us. Barry, what are you talking about? She's not told you? Might have expected as much. The myth is that Urborus created the mask when the envious seas swallowed his beloved. Unable to bear the prospect that he would never again see his patrol, Urborus made the mask which would allow him to peer into the past. He knew, however, that he could only use it once. So he waited. Waited until his longing grew so strong that it became unbearable. When the sea learnt of the mask, it was quick to respond. It made known its threat that whosoever used the mask would bring the sea's wrath down on them. For in vengeance, the sea would rise and flood all the lands and drown the living. Where do you get this mask? Sailors from Clan Dimmon pulled it from the sea, near the Njord Trench. Yeah, but how can you be sure this is Urboros's mask? Its appearance is exactly as described in the myths. You believe the myths? Only ignorant fools belittle their significance. Besides, it's not the myths that are on trial here. It's the thief. not about to justify what Yennefer did. Then don't! But try to understand her. She's not doing this to anger you, she's doing it for Ciri. I know there are maternal feelings at play, but this is no excuse, no justification. The mask of Urboros belongs to Skellige and should be used for the good of the Isle. If Yennefer uses it now, it shall lose its power, not to mention what was that? No. Jennifer's used the mask. that? Unicorns. Damn it, Yen. I saw the foglets. I meant how'd they get here. The power of the mask summoned them. Ermion says the mask might cause a natural disaster. Fortunate he's here, then. 
He can jump right in. Try to tame it. Realize he won't let this pass. Oh, I'll survive. Somehow. What now? The mask reveals the past, but only in certain places. Places where past events left a strong magical imprint. Take it. Want me to wear it? Yes. I'll cast a spell that will let me see through your eyes. Gonna read my mind again? You object? You do it whenever you want anyway. No harm in it then, is there? Let's go. Already found the first spot. Keep it on until we've seen everything. And don't stray far. Telepathy is limited in range. What's that? A portal? Two people emerged from it. The woman was searing. How can you know? The way she moved. Like a witcher. Seems they went that way. Come. Let's find the next spot. What now, you piece of shit? explosion of some sort. So powerful that even the Echo is dangerous. I wager it destroyed the forest. But Siri and her companion weren't harmed. I saw them escape. Let's see where to. The place is creepy. I don't like it. Nor do I. Anyone here when this happened had a slim chance of surviving. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry. Siri can just residue trail leads to. Valor. Any chance you can figure out where Ciri's companion fled to? His portal's got to be nearby. I'll try to find it. Come. Yes, well. Ready? Nice fight. One repelled the other with powerful magic. A mage? Most likely.
It's Ciri's companion and the one who wounded her. How do you know? I don't. Making an educated guess. They both appeared in the previous visions. Ciri's got a powerful ally. The mage who was with Ciri fled too. Know where? Hmm. His trace path leads to Velen as well. But the target coordinates of his portal differ from those of Ciri's. The explosion must have disrupted his teleportation. Hmm. Ran into Kira Metz in Velen. Coincidence, maybe, but she claimed a mage came to her looking for Ciri. Be surprised if it wasn't the same one. Whoever he is, he grows more interesting by the minute. Maybe something left of the one who got hit by the spell. It's clearing up. Ermion must be getting a handle on the weather. Which means he'll be free to attack us again. Are you pleased with yourselves? Look at what you've brought down on us! If someone's death were to help you find Ciri, would you start making human sacrifices as well? Relax. Storm's died down. You've clearly got things under control. For now! But who knows what will be a week or two on? Stop panicking! Here's your mask. It is worthless. It's an unwieldy ashtray at best. I hope you've learned something useful at least. Very. I'm talking to Geralt. You. You I'll deal with later. So? We think a powerful curse was cast here. Mm. Plausible. Considering what happened to the wood, do you know upon whom? Not yet, but we know Ciri was here. She stepped out of a portal. A mage was with her. Someone chased them. They fought. Ciri was wounded but managed to escape. Where to? Velen, probably. The mage opened a portal for her, then he fought her attacker. Yes? Is that it? Got a feeling we've found something interesting. Just need to examine one more thing. Vaporized him. Exquisite. The armor. All the workmanship's unfamiliar. Can't even tell where it's from. Probably because it belonged to a rider of the Wild Hunt. What? So it's true? The Wild Hunt? I feared as much. First here, then on Hindersfjall. What did they want? They're looking for Ciri. But why? Elder blood flows in Ciri's veins. It is true she can trace her lineage clear back to Lara Duran, which is why the women in her family have always had extraordinary abilities. But could that truly be so important? Ciri's exceptional. She travels between places here and other worlds. Space is no obstacle for her. Huh? Which is why the Wild Hunt wants to capture her. Speaking of the hunt, mentioned it appeared on Hindersfjall. Well, it happened at least a fortnight after the cataclysm struck here on Ard Skellig. The raids raided Lofoten at dusk in a blizzard. Itself a strange occurrence for that time of year. The islanders said the wraiths. They barged into their huts, killed anyone who resisted, then galloped inland, laughing fiendishly. Anyone survive? A dozen or so women, and an old man. Next stop, Hindersfjall. I'll meet you on the beach near Lofoten. Wait, can't we go together, right now? But you detest being teleported. Don't exactly like potions either, but I drink them when I have to. 
You also drink them when there's no need at all. Very well. Let's go. Stay close to me. Good luck to you. Inform me once you've learned anything new. Quite a few years since I was last on this floor. But if I remember correctly, Lofton should be this way. Raised huts and fresh graves. This must be it. Gathering of some kind. We've come at a bad time. There's no good time to talk about the wild hunt. Ritual of some kind. We'll have to wait. We'll do no such thing. Dear sisters, pardon the interruption, but we've an important matter to discuss. Can you not see we're commemorating the dead? So? And we're looking for someone who's still alive. Please, this is urgent. <sighs> then speak. They say the Wild Hunt destroyed this village. That is true, though few believe us. You don't either, I'm sure. Did you see riders on skeleton horses, wearing frost-covered armor? Aye, that's how it was. They landed on our shores in a ship made of the claws of dead men, like in the ballads. Leif yelled to grab the children. Then they came, cut him across his face. He tried to whisper, only blood came out. You were to ask about someone, not prod their wounds. That's enough. What happened then? Go on. I ran out to get help, to get Leif. But so many bodies. Yale, Ingvar, little Neggy. Which way did the riders go? Towards the sea, through the ravine, on horses made of bones. Bones and ice and... Enough! Get to the point. Now. We're looking for a young woman, name of Ciri. Ashen hair, green eyes. I'm sorry. She is not here. Unless she lies in a grave. That is, I do not recall one by that name. But I've buried so many, I may have forgotten. This, this Siri, has she a scar here on her cheek? Yes, yes, what happened to her? Don't know. Saw her but for a moment, right before, before it all. She was in the stables with Craven. A thousand curses upon him. Remember anything else? Anything at all? Only that she seemed tired. Very tired. And... And her hair was wet. Great. So we know she bathed. Progress. I'm sorry, Ska... Craven. My apologies. Craven. Craven could have told you more. This Craven you mentioned, does he have a name? He did. Until the Elder struck him from the Saga of Ancestors. It's as if he has ceased to exist. The lore forbids anyone from touching him, speaking to him even uttering his name. What did he do to deserve that? He fled from the wild hunt. He alone. We need to talk to him, even if it's not in keeping with your customs. You've come too late. He went to the garden to fight Morkvag. A coward who willingly seeks battle? Am I the only one who sees the contradiction? That's why he did it. Craven knew he would prove the Elders wrong only if he killed Morkvarg. And thus regain his honor and his name. Trial by ordeal. Very skeleton. I do not mock your laws. Please also respect ours. Morkvarg. What's that? Who, you mean? The vilest man ever to inhabit Skelligan. Nothing was ever sacred to him. He attacked his own clan's lands, took gold from Nilfgaard, 
killed children, pregnant women. Mm hmm. Know the type. They said he feared only one thing the wrath of the gods. Borgvarg sought to prove how wrong they were, so he sailed to Hindisfjall to ransack the goddess's garden. This was over a decade ago. Archpriestess Ulva stood in his way. He thrust a blade between her ribs and cast her down in the mud. As her lifeblood left her, she cursed him, and Morkvarg transformed into a beast. A curse? A monster? You've got some work to do. I can get rid of Morkvarg. Don't know what he's turned into, but a silver sword should do the trick. It's not that simple. There have been those who have bested Morkvarg, yet he always returns. So, it's a complex curse, meaning I need more information. I understand, but I've told you all I know. Speak with Toradar's son, Einar. He was in the garden when Morkvarg and his men attacked. He saw what happened. Of all the pilgrims there at the time, he alone escaped with his life. He settled in Larvik. You'll find him there at the landing, provided he's not out to sea when you arrive. Where is this holy garden? Not far from here. North. We cultivated healing herbs there once. And now? Now we walk only as far as the tree the goddess planted. We place our offerings and make our pleas before it. Those who venture below remain in the garden forever. Thanks for your help. I understand you intend to enter the garden. I dislike it when foreigners enter the sacred grounds. But so be it. Custom demands pilgrims make an offering of their own blood before the tree. Craven surely did so. Unless he lacked not only courage, but respect for Freyr as well. You needn't worry about us. Geralt and I always give the gods the respect they are due. Even if Craven's dead, we'll manage. How exactly? You'll see when the time comes. You could stand to be nicer sometimes. I suppose. But then I wouldn't be the woman you fell in love with, would I? My, my. That must be more. A bite. Just one morsel. One piece. A crumb. Food. Food. <coughs> Shank! Not, not again! Not again! <coughs> He doesn't seem happy to see us. Wait till he gets a closer look at me. Lead yourself for the goddess? Not necessarily, but Craven did. We just might pick up his scent. Craven was here. Look, the impression. Kneeled down on one knee himself to make the offering. Bloodstains, see them? No. I may be inhumanly beautiful, but I don't have superhuman senses. Not like you. Which is why you should stay up here. No offense, but in that undergrowth and mud, you'd be like a... Ball and chain? Planned to say it gentler, but yeah, that's basically what I had in mind. Fine. We'll do as you say. 
If the need arises, I can cast spells from up here. Thought you might object. Me? Please. I can be extraordinarily conciliatory. Yen, look me in the eye. What are you plotting? Many things. How to seize the Temerian crown, how to sell Kaer Morin out from under you. Go already! that. Gotta go down, provided I can open the sluice. Mechanism looks pretty standard. One lever to choose the sluice gate, the other to work it. Ah! 
Briggs. Markvark doesn't need his victims. Strange. Is it Craven? No, this one's been here a while. What? I can't hear you. If you want to chat, come closer. Her senses are really dulled. Where's the key? All I have in the chapter house. The crate, but the key. Where's the key? Ah. Why so silent, Robert? You thief, you rogue, you horse son, you worthless bastard! I will find the key without you, idiot, stupid prick! The curse <laughs> makes me bite, uh, scratch, mangle, uh, till I drop. Uh, you've got time before the blood's gone from me and, and I return. Listen uh, uh, carefully. Uh, 
Undo, undo the curse. Free me. Finally, I will, I will reward you. Mentioned a reward of some kind. Looted. Raided. Drunk most away. All but one. True treasure. Head away. Yours. Just help me. Looking for a man named Craven. Apparently came here to kill you. Seems it didn't work out. Those who come rarely introduce themselves. What did he look like? No idea. Then I cannot help you. Uh, I've shredded uh, uh, many. Uh, uh. So, no joy in being a werewolf? Nay. It's the worst. Not the garden to which I'm bound, even. But the hunger. Anything I devour turns to ash. Ash I cannot eat, I cannot drink, yet I bloody live and roam and prowl. The hunger is terrible, ah, terrible. I bite my own flesh. But the smallest morsel burns in my throat. Throat. Like boiling tar. Everlasting hunger. Classic as curses go. Goes to explain why all those corpses went untouched. Help! Or I'll return to shred you, rip you limb from limb. Wouldn't count on it. Fool, you can kill me once, twice, thrice, but in the end I shall conquer. Best lift the curse. Free will, I offer you this fare. Now dig in. Won't turn to ash. Won't know until you try. Come on, a spoonful for daddy. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> this shite again! <laughs> What will you do? What a witcher ought to.
need the key. just locked. Gotta go round. Blood. Craven's blood. Craven's blood. easily.
here either. blood. once you find Craven. seen rot fiends in better condition than this. Shit. Fine, scrape together what you can and haul the bits up here. Take it you've got a plan? No, I just like to stare at rotting flesh. We'll talk when you get here, all right? That's Yen, charming as ever. Come on, someone wants to meet you. Putrefaction set in, but the vocal cords are intact. 
We might still get something out of him. Doesn't look like the talkative type. Anyone can be made to talk. Even a corpse. One must simply know how. Thought necromancy was strictly forbidden. So is premarital sex. But I'm not about to be bothered by such foolishness. Black magic's no joke. Casting those spells never ends well. Never. I don't like it any more than you do, believe me. But the thought that Ciri is in danger? I like that even less. I understand. Still doesn't give us the right to... Geralt, please. This is not the time to debate ethics. Need any ingredients for the spell? Hmm. The blood of a newborn, a virgin's tongue, and the eye of a newt. Mind trying again without the sarcasm? I don't need a thing. I'm a sorceress, not a village herbalist. All I need is energy. A great deal of energy. We're very lucky this place is saturated with magic. It's also considered sacred. Priestesses will be furious if you use the garden's power to revive a corpse. Geralt, you're getting on my nerves. I offer you solutions, you try to poke holes in them. Sorry to bother you with my doubts. Please, Geralt. That's just it. Your please is never a request, only ever a command. But let's move on. Let's get to work. Selene, Selene, Dufrain. Selene, Selene, Davidar. Siri. Zirel. Can you hear me? I can. I must leave you now. We will meet beneath drowned dead rock. Can you remember? Mm -hmm. Repeat it. Drowned dead rock. You're awake. And I thought you'd... Where... where am I? And who are you? 
It's all right. You're on Hindersfjall, village of Lofoten. They call me Skjall. But how'd I... What? We fished you out of the sea. Me and that friend of yours. And where is he? My friend. Stepped out a while ago. Said he needed to find a boat. Why does he wear that mask? Something not right with his mug? No. He simply doesn't like others to see it. How long did I lie there? All day, near about. T'was morn when we brought you in. Night's near come now. Damn. Too long. You needed the rest. Desperately. Been through a lot, eh? Got some nasty, fresh-looking scars. What's this? Did you undress me? Uh, I, I had no choice. Soaked through you were, and I had to see if you had any wounds that needed tending. Mm hmm And if my breasts needed smearing with thorks tallow? Nay, nay, th that was mum and sis. I, I'd never dare. I swear. On my honour. <laughs> Easy. I believe you. And where... Stepped out of... Why is he where... No. Help... Help me stand. I... I don't... I don't think you should... Less talk, more giving me a hand. Ah, that's me brother for you. Out of sight for a second and he's already put his paws on a girl. Astrid, you're as dim as dishwater. You know perfectly well I'm helping her up. It's a shame, I know, but I've got to interrupt your courtship. Come, we're off to the sauna. What? Why is your mouth agape like you're noodling for an eel? The sauna. Girl, you was blue as a whale when we brought you in here. Your blood needs thawing. Really, there's no need. I feel fine now. Hey! Fine? You can't stand on your own two feet. And it's no surprise with your muscles frozen stiff. But don't you worry. Mum and I will take care of you. I'm sorry. But I must get to Drown Dead Rock. As fast as possible. I shan't force you to stay. But the rock's a ways off and you can barely walk. You'd best take a horse. True. Skjall can prepare a horse for you. You'll have to wait a spell, but even so, you'll get there faster than on foot. Fine, that'll do. Thank you both very much. Pish posh, there's no need. Now come, we gotta sweat the sick out of you. Where are my clothes? I've taken them already. Come on! That man in the mask, he's from afar, isn't he? Oh yes. From very far away. Where exactly? Aren't you nosy? Surprised? I've been sitting in this fish puddle me whole life. I'd love to travel like you. Like me? No, you wouldn't like that. Trust me. And your muscles are working. The main the string don't catch on your nose. Ow! In you go and get out of those rags. All of them? I should think so. Let's go. I'm getting goose pimples. Finally. I was so worried, Jid. Ach, Mum, you always worry. Everything's fine, ain't it? Mm. Yes, it's fine. Good. That's good. What's on your thigh, child? Is that a bruise? This? No. It's a tattoo. So it is. A red rose. It mean anything? It's a souvenir of someone special who's dead now. 
I picture it already. You were promised to a handsome lad. He gave you a red rose before sailing off. But the cruel sea swallowed him. <laughs> Close. Eh, child. Those bards have stuffed your head with their foolish romances. Here we are gabbing away. Steam's gone. Gotta douse the cones. Say, back home, have you got saunas too? You know, I don't really have a home. I'm a traveller. Ah, oh, that's right. Where was your ship headed? Ship? We fished you out of the sea. We thought you were in a shipwreck. Yes, my ship. We set sail from Novigrad. And what brings you to Skellige? I'm here looking for someone. Not your betrothed, I hope. Why? It'd break Skjall's heart. He's head over heels for you, girl. Sat at your bedside all the day, staring like you was painted by a master. Astrid, I asked you not to tell her. Oops. Well, now the milk's spilt. Do you fancy Skjall? To be honest, I prefer women. Hi. Now I see. The scald sings true. Love bears many guises. Listen, it's lovely sitting here with you, but I really must go now. I understand. Who'd want to stay in this hole? We're all related three times over and the air stinks of fish. I can't see how you're related to anyone here. No one in Lofferton groans and bitches quite like you do. Sit down and be quiet. Child, Sjald's certain to have readied the horses by now. But before you go, you ought to take a quick jump in the water. It'll do you good. I suppose. Why not? Head through the door and you'll see the pier. Be careful, it's slippery. Thank you, once more. And once more, there's no need. Gods bless your journey. Regards to your father. to your father. Ah. Uh, ow! Storms are coming. Gotta go to your mom. Tell her to take the wash down. You keep track. Oh, you're here. The horses are ready. As am I. Shall we ride? Listen, I... I hope... My sister, she didn't talk any nonsense to you, did she? Except to mention that you fancy me. What? what But I asked her... Besides, it's not... Of course, 
You are very... But... You know what? Let's ride. You're in a hurry and it'll be dark soon. You're right. I hope to come back here one day. We can finish our conversation then. Sounds dangerous. <laughs> I didn't intend it to. I'll take Njord. You can ride Grey back. She's old, but she'll make the... Run for your lives! You stay here! I'll go and... I can look after myself.
What was that? The wild hunt. Right, the rog. The world's end. No, not yet. But I must go. They're here for me. Get on the horse. I'll show you the way to the rock. You should stay. See to Astrid, your mum. Afterwards. Once I'm sure you'll make it. Let's go! Watch out! Right, silly! Don't look back! Catching up! sympathy for the boy. He... That was no boy, Geralt. It was a hunk of rotting, rancid flesh that spoke through my magic. It didn't just speak. It howled in pain. I know it seemed real, but it was no longer human. Do you understand? Nice of you to be so concerned for the corpse. Much more than you were for me. 
Yen, are you all right? I'm splendid. I'd feel even better if I hadn't had to remind you to ask that question. What? What happened to the garden? It died. Like I said, the spell, it requires a great deal of energy. You knew it would end like this, didn't you? Didn't consider it worth mentioning? No. I knew you'd protest. Your sense of decency is charming, but it does get in the way sometimes. Yen, are you all right? I'm splendid. I'd feel even better if I hadn't had to remind you to ask that question. Could have shown some sympathy for the boy. He... That was no boy, Geralt. It was a hunk of rotting, rancid flesh that spoke through my magic. Didn't just speak. It howled in pain. I know it seemed real, but it was no longer human. Do you understand? Nice of you to be so concerned for the corpse. Much more than you were for me. Geralt, I know we should talk. But not here, alright? I don't wish to stay a moment longer. The garden! Our garden! How could you? We helped! And you! Inconceivable! Now, now. Don't you dare try to calm me. We've every right to be furious. Furious! And you, you will pay for this. I'm sorry. Is that all? Will you say nothing else? Nothing that would help. I shall make sure all Skellige hears what you did here. Wait. I did this. I alone. Geralt tried to stop me. I refused to listen. I might have known. They warned me about you. Sorceresses. None shall open their door to you. None shall feed your hunger, and none shall tend to your wounds. Yen, you didn't have to do that. But I wanted to. 
I'd rather not talk about it. We must focus on what Scal told us. The key to finding Siri is that ugly thing Skell saw on the beach. That's what I think. Do you think... Is there a chance that thing might be Siri? That... Well... She's been transformed by some curse? Don't even want to think about it. Geralt, we must... Might be her. Might be her companion. Or someone else altogether, connected to them both. I don't know. You must see Dona. Ask him to whom exactly he sold the thing. Not coming with me? You know, I'm better off not showing myself to him now.